Happy Monday, all. So the pre-sale went live last Friday. Doesn't really mean anything to you, um, but we sold out insanely fast. Um, I sold out all my spots in 20 minutes. I'm always adding more and more spots uh, and I'm selling out quicker. So thank you guys so much for the crazy support, uh, which just means I have a lot of work to do. Um, so I have some computer work that I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna set the machine up to start running pocket clips because that's very hands-off. I don't really have to focus on it and it's a long enough runtime that it gives me some time to do some other things. Um, Pre-sales spec'd out between four and six weeks. I really wanna come in at the four week window. I did oversell some spots this time because I wasn't able to shut it down fast enough. Um, so I'm gonna have my hands full, so let's get to it. First thing we do for the pocket clips is load the blanks into the vices. Um, I 3D printed these little fixtures that hold the titanium blanks in a rough location so that I can just quickly drop them in the vise and uh, basically set them up offline so the switch over is faster. I use the touch probe on the very first run of parts just to get the X, Y, and Z to make sure everything really hasn't moved. Um, I don't normally have to touch it off, but I do it more as a sanity check and just to make sure the machine doesn't have any backlash or anything weird. It's kind of like a, just a quick check I can do at the start of every run. There's also not a lot of material around these titanium um, blanks, so I have to be pretty close where the code is running. If, I, if I'm off um, in X and Y, I'll miss um, machining aside. So um, just, just a quick way to double check actually missed uh, some of the time lapse of the uh, rough machining here, um, but I got it in the long duration time lapse, which is right here. Um, basically one tool takes care of all the roughing um, and basically brings it to a close to uh, finished size. And then I'll have a finishing tool come around, um, zip around the outside, bring it to finished size. And then there'll be a smaller tool that'll do all the 3D um, surfacing on the inside of the pocket clip. That makes a little fluting pattern. The only reason I do this is uh, is visual. Um, I could easily machine this um, with a much bigger tool, but I I enjoy the uh, I enjoy the finish this tool leaves. And uh, this isn't the most speedy process. I think a pocket clip um, all up takes me like 10, 15 minutes, um, but I don't have to focus on it. And I can make way more pocket clips than I can anything else. So it's not really my bottleneck. Little 1 32nd inch ball mill um, does all the engraving for the serials. Um, I actually have some code um, that I love that um, auto increments the serial codes um, so I don't have to post code every time which is amazing pocket clip uh, 300 or pen 300 the pens the pens are technically tied to the pocket clips the pocket clips are the ones that are serialized but yeah whatever it all works out my little production flow board I actually need some to move thing bleh, words <laughs> I need to move some things around on this um I've altered it but uh, it still works pretty good um, I just I need to reprint it because I do things in different orders now Oh, these are those printed spacers from you know a few episodes back. They work out really well, um, and I can stack them. I could technically, if I want, put like three pens per tray. Just put a little bit of felt between them or something, but I haven't needed to do that yet. Next up, we cut a bunch of stickers. This is basically what I do when the machine is running. So you'll see I kind of disappear for a second, uh, change a tool, then come back, continue cutting stickers. Um, this is all just kind of packaging or stickers for the pen boxes. Just, um, stuff that I like to do in my downtime or when the machine is running. Um, in this case, I was doing it at night because, uh, I don't know, I kind of find it zenful when, you know, the whole house is quiet, everyone's taken care of. I can just come down here, throw a podcast on, stick stickers on. It's just super low mental effort. Um, I stick all the stickers on the boxes when they're flat, if I can, um, because it just makes life a lot easier. Here's all those printed little spacers that are going to go on the triangle pen boxes. Just making a little pile of them. Next, I have all the triangle boxes that I'll have to put those spacers on and also stick some stickers on. Pleasing noises. I don't know, something about like high speed sounds of people working is just enjoyable to me. And then we go through the process of putting the spacer on the box and then uh, putting the sticker on the box. The reason I put the spacer on there is those boxes are a little bit too small for my longest pen. And I didn't want to make shipping tray carriers for like a bunch of different size pens. Uh, so by just spacing the box out more, there's enough engagement on the lid. Not ideal, but um, there's enough that uh, I can just run one size little shipping tray um, for my big shipping box. And I don't, I don't have to think about it too much. And then what I do is I have little triangle pieces of foam uh, that I pack into the lid for the different size pens. That way everything is still, you know, nicely supported, um, protected. And uh, I don't have to think about, you know, trying to stock a billion things at once. I can just stock one size box, one size shipping carrier tray, and uh, everything is happy. This is tedious. I'm sticking all the labels on. So I think I'm going to get those printed um, just for nothing more than peeling the backers off is kind of annoying, but that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.